welcome to the latest Dave Rice production, Sika Subsistence Deer Hunting Part 1. We got an early start this morning, even beating the Alaska Ferry, and as soon as we got the raft pumped up, we're heading to shore. Looking like a real nice morning for chasing that Sika blacktail deer. Well, we've got all the gear to shore. We're gonna hang her up and get ready and head up into the woods to a place we've never been before. It's a real small doe. Well, we'll pass this one up. She's pretty small. So how far are we from the creek? Oh, it's got to be a mile, I would think. A mile from the creek? 400 feet up? And we got bear puke. And he's been eating salmon. Looks like I'm behind Choke Charlie's Bar in Anchorage. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> bear and Megan, huh? Yeah. You get nervous, Bigly? Uh-huh. Legal <laughs> that way. <laughs> Yeah, this looks like it's a, it's a, it is, yeah, it looks like a fawn kill or something from the spring. Bear got it here. Yep. I've seen one deer, not much sign up here. That there'd be a lot of them in this area, but there wasn't. That's the way it is when you're sick of black-tailed deer hunting. Sometimes you're there and sometimes they're not. Bears like to mark their territory. And this is a cedar tree we found out here. And it looks like the bear has used his claw to, to rip the cedar bark to mark his territory. First uh, Boletus type mushroom I've seen up here, southeast Alaska. Grow a lot down south, Washington, Oregon, the mountains. The first ones I've ever seen here. Oh, there's another one. I'm following him. I can't. I can't believe we flagged our way in and then we can't find the flags on the way back. We used 40 miles of flagging and I haven't seen one in an hour. <laughs> we didn't keep it in one piece. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it. Just roll it up. Right? Yeah. Right. You guys kept cut, cutting up the flag in two inch pieces. We lost it. Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> oh, Just drive the end of it on your belt and follow it back. Yep. Next time I take a fishing line. So why why don't you think critters are chewing on them? No critters? Well, there's no little teeth marks on them. Yeah. Well, why aren't they doing it? They should be. You think the martin and the squirrels would eat it? Yeah, I mean, they must not be calcium core or something. Hmm? Hmm? There's 
been some real fishing going on. <laughs> What's the matter? Three critters. Three and off. Are you spooked? Yep. Yep. They didn't fish, you didn't jump up here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, he's done eating salmon. He's look, looking for vegetables. That's fresh. Yeah. Getting tired of salmon. Yeah. Well, we can cut. It, there's a real nice little trail that cuts right over this point. You don't have to walk the rocks out there. You just walk right up open timber. Ah, uh, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Those bears been in here digging up, looking for sand fleas or something. Roots. There are some tracks here that are usually new. Yeah, but he's been rolling around there in that gravel, made himself a, a gravel bed. Good place to scratch, huh? This real fresh. He dug this since the rain. It rained a few hours ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, we didn't see any deer this time, but as usual, we always find something interesting to look at. Well, about a week later, I got invited out by Jimmy and Mike, and decided to head up, uh, head up to some creek they've been watching where there's some deer hanging around. Traveled the day before and camped overnight in Mike's uh, large boat. Took the skiff to shore before daylight. Walking up this creek in the dark with flashlights. We set ourselves down in an area where we thought there would be some deer crossing. Let me tell you, it's kind of spooky sitting out there about 5, 5.30 in the morning with a, no light, just waiting for daylight. About the time we got light enough to see and the birds started singing, things started to happen. Yeah, squirrels started coming out. We call them timber tigers. They make more noise than a whole herd of rhinoceros out there in the dark. By early morning, they were really collecting cones. Must be going to be a rough winter. It was so cold out that I decided to try out my new seal skin gloves. These gloves are great for uh, worrying and packing a gun, and they've got great finger dexterity. There's a lot of deer moving around in the dark. Of course, we're always worried about bears. So I always pack uh, a container of this bear spray with me. I got no idea if this stuff ever works. I've never talked to anybody that ever used it before. Really, I don't want to try using it either. But I just pack it just in case. Or, uh, after daylight, we see light enough to shoot. We had a couple of deer hanging around us, but we couldn't get any shots. I had a spike within 30 feet, but it was on the other side of the brush. Jimmy was up in this tree. He had a two point down below him. He couldn't get a shot. Then we had a bear about 250, 300 pounds go running right through the middle of all of us. It was just running as fast as a dog could run, just like his tail was on fire. We never did find out what that was all about. Then Mike had a bear, it looked like it was as big as a house, went up above past him where he was set. Well, what'd you think of your roost there, Jimmy? Pardon me? What'd you think of your roost? <laughs> it's about 90% uncomfortable up there. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm, I'm, we both decided I think this might have cost you that deer this morning. If you would have been here, you'd have seen that deer. Yeah. You know, and being up in that tree. Up there looking down yeah. in the limbs. I think it cost you the deer. We had, what, maybe three, four, five deer come by? Yeah. And a couple bear.
We had some. Had some. One bear came through doing about nine bazillion miles an hour. I thought it was a dog to begin with, looking down on him. It's yeah. a little dinky guy. Yeah, a little black one. And then, I figured, you know, maybe it was that guy from the Forest Service with his dog. Yeah. But, no, no, I didn't say anything, you know. You don't yell bear or do anything like that, because it didn't look like one. Well, it looked like a bear when he went by me. <laughs> yeah, when he got up close, it did. But yeah. When I, when I put my gun on that buck, Dave, I could see you. On the right side of the on the tree, the reticle, no, on my scope, and I, if I that bullet would have deflected in a bone in that deer, I would have shot you. Yeah, but th that deer, take the chance. that deer never crossed that road though. He stayed on this side, didn't he? Yeah. Then he must have gone back out that way, wherever it went. But it was a two point, huh? Yeah. Hmm. About this big. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Let's go find your deer. Like that'll be hard. Where is he? I heard it go thump. Yeah, she over here. How cold are right now? Yeah. That's because we got chilled. Good eater. It's there an eater. We got cold, Dave. It got cold sitting out here. But uh, that was with that Barnes X bullet, huh? Uh huh. What what caliber and what size? It's a 165 Barnes flat base. Wow. 165 grain. You know. You know, an R6 caliber. Oh, we just got chilled sitting out here in the about three hours starting in the dark. Yeah. What time is it? About eight thirty, isn't it? Eight thirty or soon, yeah. Those Barnes X's sure put holes through them. Yep. <laughs> well, this is our favorite activity again. You know, dragging out the dead. I'm gonna drop her up and get her in the pack. I can't believe that deer track is that big, that's and it's all—that's a thirty out six. And that's, this is all over the and beach. He's, he's just walking. Yeah. Now, it's not a jump down print. No. That is just awesome. That's that's cool. Yeah, that is that is amazing. Oh, we see with Pine Martin. Yeah. yeah. I got nose to nose with a Pine Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that log. Look, I lift it up. Yeah. That we came, you know, that was going to shoot over the top of. He ran up the log. I finally had to do that so that he could see me. And you should have seen it. Hair stuck out all over the place. I did not want a pine. He was a, in he was a, in my he was a funny one. He, it's that he had a bunch of brown on his face. Oh, he was blonde. The first Blondish was brown. brown. The back half was dark. People are always asking me how I'm able to get such interesting video or pictures. Well. I spend a lot of time sitting and watching, whether I'm out with friends who take me places or whether I'm out by myself. 
mostly along the Sitka Road system where I do a lot of videoing. I sit for sometimes up to three hours at a time sitting and watching. It can be boring, but a lot of times it can be very rewarding. Where is it? There's two of them. There's two of them. There's See the it? There's yeah. the second one. See it? Yeah. Can you get it, Mike? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Hurry, it's going to go over the logs. Going over the logs. Yep, I can't get the film. Too many trees in the way. It's coming this way. Is it back here? Yeah, it's coming out. Yeah, I can't get it. Where is he now? Right behind it. I can see him. Yeah, I can see him. I can see him over there. I greased him. I got him. <laughs> yes. The camera just kept focusing on the trees. I know. I couldn't. I could not shoot. I kept trying to shoot through the. Through the limbs, yeah. Yeah. My camera could start to see it, and then all of a sudden, it focused on the leaves in the front. What's Jimmy doing? Oh, he's rounding up our brass. Well, the problem is, is, uh, yeah, the deer they shot are over here. The deer they shot over here, and we got a river between us, maybe too deep even for our waders. But the guys are going across to check it out anyway. Two does coming across the river. We were able to get them both. Yeah, fortunately, it's a small fork in the river here. I couldn't film very well because uh, they couldn't even shoot very well because there was an alder tree between us and the deer. But, like Jimmy says, they're tasty. A couple of tasty morsels. And now they're trying to figure out where they made their first shot over here and where they came ashore. Pretty much a wet day today. The rain in the mountains, no snow yet. And of course, there's our deer over here. We'll get some more video in a minute. Yeah, guys are congratulating themselves now. Oh, a button buck, huh? Yeah. Still good eating. Yeah, you guys are doing good. Bringing home the bacon, that's what counts. Yes, sir. What'd you hit that one with, Jimmy? 168 grain Barnes triple shock. Their new one? Yeah. Out of an odd six. Out of an odd six. Uh huh. And Mike, you did the same, you had yep. your yep. same bullet? 165 grain Barnes X flat base. In yours, too. Wow. Well, it sure mowed them down. That was just a little over 200 yards. Yeah, it was a pretty good shot. Especially shooting through an alder tree. Yeah, I guess. That was the part of getting me. I couldn't film. Them's the tasty ones. Wouldn't this be a year and a half baby with his mama? 
Could be. Yeah. Well, now we gotta do something. Break out the knives again. Break out the knives. That little buck. Yes. Oh, 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 look at these. Oh, maybe that was where she was running around. That's where she was running around. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. No, they're the only tracks. I didn't see any others up here. Black powder shooting from yeah. Prince of Wales. It's deer 30. Oh, yeah. deer 30. Deer 30. My, let's put that, this one just side by side with that one. And I've got my camera. Sure. We're going to... Yeah, this is just some of the important gear that we take with us hunting. <laughs> it looks more like Jimmy's been collecting garbage instead of... Hey, that's my good stuff. Your good stuff in there. This is the good stuff. You ought to see what I left at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to take care of the deer now, so... Mike's over there putting his rubber gloves on. They work real well for cleaning up these deer. They're easy to hang on to the meat and stuff. Then you don't stink like deer going out. Yeah, we don't like to stink like deer for going out, as you might imagine why. Too many bears. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, cut our tags. Make it legal. Encourage everybody out there to cut their tags. Well, yeah, it's not hard to go get more if you need them. That's true. Now, Jimmy, you just found out you cut the wrong month? Nope. No. <laughs> You'd be nice, son. <laughs> You'd be nice. You'd be nice. nice. Uh -huh. Well, the work is done. And the rain's falling. We're gonna get out of here and get back to the boat. Oh, he found a knife. It must be mine. Three knives on the beach. Well, Jimmy, he's getting dressed up for the rain. Yeah, they'll be coming here pretty quick. Looking pretty pretty sad right now with rain falling but the weatherman was right today and said it was going to rain but this place looks like a successful hunt trip welcome to Sitka subsistence deer hunting part two every fall subsistence deer hunters head out into the woods in the Sitka area suit the wily black-tailed deer subsistence is a very important part Economy. We have two hunts today. The first hunt, I will be going out with Mike and Jimmy again. And after that, I will make a second hunt with Al and Hugh. As you know, I don't videotape uh, talking heads. And I don't like to set up situations to try to establish any male bonding. So let's get out in the woods and see if we can't find us a deer. They'll keep you above the bears anyway. Yeah, Jimmy's got himself an ego roost here, all right. Salmon. 
I guess that's what it looks like after you've eaten a uh, rotten humpy. Sure the bears have been digging and eating skunk cabbages. I don't know, maybe they eat this after eating salmon, make them feel better. Freezing this morning. Looks like they were digging not too long ago though. Oh, guys have found a really neat place, haven't they? Oh, gosh. I have followed deer trail. This is where deer's coming in here and raking the alders. Trail kind of heads that way, those guys. Some more claw marks here. Went over this log here. I better go find those guys. Don't want to be back in here too much by myself. Well, the guys decided they wanted to hunt alongside the river today. Pretty nice day. Well, it didn't take them long to find a spot where they wanted to stop and hunt. Actually, I think they're just going to sit here and eat their lunch and glance the river up and down here. Check out the river banks. A lot of times we sit here for two, three hours at a time, which is fine for me because I don't walk too well anymore. But I do get bored. So I started looking at things like water running. And you know, you know you're really bored when you can sit down and just watch a leaf float by. Normally, I would never do this. You know, it was quite fascinating watching this leaf. I didn't know if it was going to go to the right or to the left. I didn't even know if it was going to float or join the leaves on the bottom. It just shows you how boring it can get sometimes just sitting around doing nothing. Every once in a while, one of the little dippers would come by, or water oozles, look for bugs along the river. Give me something to watch. guys have been eating their trail mix. I'll tell you, and you know you're a good Alaskan when you can sit down and eat a nice hot or even a cold lunch right next to a dead rotten salmon. And we just keep watching and watching and watching and watching. What do you think he is? Five, six pounds? Uh -huh. At least. Having lunch watching these big Dolly Varden down here. This little stream. Coils right, you can see them. Yeah, you see them, it'll, it'll clear up in a minute. Oh, yeah. Watch that big fish. Yep, just amazing what you could do with a garbage bag. This looks kind of silly, but whenever you need to move once in a while and don't have any rubber boots, these garbage bags work pretty good. Actually, a good heavy mill one from the hardware store will last for four or five crossings. I don't recommend any of the local grocery bags. They won't work. Well, the guys found another place to set. I think they just wanted to sit in this spot because the sun was coming in here warming it up. No matter where we stop, Jimmy's never satisfied. He's got to get out his little chopping tool and trim a few bushes here and trim a few bushes there. You see that fourth one up above in the rocks? You see the one Jimmy farther up in the rocks? Up to the right above. About three, four feet, 100, 100 feet higher to the right up on the rocks. You'll see it right in the rocks. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice big goat. He's almost made it to that little group of trees now. 
Yeah, that's a nice goat. There's a Billy, and there's a, there's a, a nanny, and a couple of kids. She's got two kids. You see them? Up left. Up left. Mm -hmm. It's a big nanny with two, two little kids. Yeah, there's a one, two, three, four. I see five goats on the left now. One up on top, two, three in the middle, and one down below. Yep, that's four. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Five, I'm sorry, five over there. Five over there. Uh -huh. Sure is. God damn, that could be two big billies together. Some's dropping down below the frozen waterfall. Everybody thought we'd be watching goats instead of for deer, huh? Yeah. On the right hand side? Right hand side of the small patch of timber, okay. huh? Okay, yeah. you got the, the that broken patch of timber that's yeah. wide. Yeah. There's a finger that goes up, not a finger, but there's a patch uh -huh. of high timber. Yeah. Go just above it. They're right, right above in there's there. Right in there, huh? Oh, okay. See where the two are up on the high cliff? Yep. Up in the rocks? Under the right, I see it down below. It's a little one. No, no. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Big dollies in here. Holy smoke, huge. There's dollies and cohos. There's a lot of fish in this big hole. Well, and I get very many deer today, but we're seeing a lot of interesting things. Oh, there's some beautiful fish in here. Big dollies. Coho salmon. There's some nice fish in this hole. That's the size of those Dyler Varden. They almost look like Red, yeah, they're a coho and they're already changing color. Uh, it's a ribbon in here. Board, haven't seen anything, so across the river we go again. This is a scrape. It's it's a rub, and he's scraping the ground, and he's he's urinating and marking a spot, setting up for breeding time here. Yeah, he's urinating down there, huh? Yep. He's 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 pawing with his front hoofs. He's rubbing his eyes right here. Yeah. And his eyes right here and here to lead that scent gland. Yeah, well he's, he's sure been... right here too, right up ahead of us. Yeah, he's sure tearing this thing up. Yep, he's he's uh this is his this is what's called a home range and he'll check this every eight hours till he till he gets a doe. But he's done another one right here, I see. Yeah, it looks like I found an old Martin trap. Got the chain and where you hook it to the ground and stake, I guess. Don't know that much about trapping, but uh, I know people trap marten and mink in this area.
Yeah, Jimmy just got a doe. Called it in here. Yeah, quite a blood trail there going anyway. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, that's just a... It's like you're pouring. Yeah, it just drained it nothing flat. Uh-huh. Good. That's what you want. Oh, boy. That's the awesome yeah, it gets the blood out of the middle. Yeah, it sure yeah. collapsed. She's a good eater. Well, I'll tell you what, it didn't take her long. Uh-oh. Oh, I know she took out a good one. What, uh... She's barren. Yeah. A barren doe, huh? Mm-hmm. What um uh what gun are you using today? Same out six. Same out six, with that same one what one sixty seven or something. Wait, one sixty eight Barnes triple shock. Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. Same bullet. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, we might as well just check out the rest of the musk eggs because they haven't been down on the river this morning. Let's see. Check Oh, I've got the big black dark Never mind, I'm fine. Well, the guy's got one deer up in that valley, but I want to go check out another one here before dark. As we get loaded up here and over to Big Boat, we'll uh, we'll run over to another spot and maybe see it sit there till dark or evening sometime. Well, the guys decided to get up here and uh, sit on that bank on the left so they can overlook the river. It's getting kind of cold about sundown. They're drinking coffee, got their stocking caps on and their gloves. A little bit chilly, pretty close to freezing. But where else can you sit and drink coffee, look for deer, and... Uh, I just look over the side and watch the coho salmon swim by. Yeah, we had a couple of infiltrators come through our lines this morning. Just a doe and a small fawn. Still looking for that big buck today. Yeah, Jimmy's gonna cross the stream, go over to the stump stump pile on the other side, and sit. We're gonna watch off this point. Deer crossing the river. Yeah, deer just crossed upstream from us just as Jimmy was crossing the creek. We saw it just as we went across the river. Yeah, the deer crossed right about here where Jimmy's at now. Went across the river. Jimmy couldn't see it because of the stump right there. Yeah, that is a big one. I'm thinking about eight feet. What do you think? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's a big one. That's a big, that's a big bear. It's not a deer tracks, but that is a big bear, and he's close. Yeah, them are big bear tracks. A lot of deer tracks too. In here, he came in here to check his rubs. He sure did. 
his track stopped right there where he took a look at it. Or here he stopped right here. Yeah. And he hit it. He sure did. That deer's in this bottom now. Somewhere. The rest of the winter. Until we get him. Yeah, he's, he's got one there. Right he's got another one back in the woods right there. Right here too. Yeah. That deer is obviously in here, more over there. You want to kill this deer? It's a no-brainer. We'll be back today to, to check these, provided we don't piss or touch or spit. Look at this. Will you do it before dark? That I don't know. You could have done it. Yeah, these bucks are in here already rubbing and tearing up these alders. It's what we've been waiting for. Been chewed up here. Knocked over. Well, this one here, the alder, he skinned it. It's so fresh that the red pieces of, of bark are laying on the ground here. You know... Those are big bear tracks. Well, the guys couldn't find their second deer, so uh, we headed on home. Next trip I made with Al and Hugh, and uh, we had a fun boat ride getting to where we were going. There's a little piece of wood. Where? Right, we just went past a little square piece. Ah. I've seen more wood down in this area than anywhere I've driven my boat. I don't know what the deal, yeah, what the deal is. It's a catch all. Yeah, great hunting trip. Snowing, blowing, cold. Oh, isn't this fun? Now this is real deer hunting. By mid-morning we finally got a break in the weather. So we decided to get out and do some snooping around. It wasn't long before we were seeing some deer sign. Yeah, fresh just this morning. We just stepped back in the woods for a little bit and uh, saw this deer and well sometimes the cameraman gets a deer once in a while. Nice young doe and those are the ones that I like to eat. Took it with the uh, Savage 308 using that 30 caliber Barnes uh, triple shot bullet. Went right through her. Works real great. Looks like some river otter been snooping around here this morning. Actually there are quite a few of them in this area. Now there's a nice otter track.
take your time might be another one. There he is. Spike. Nice little spike. Nice fat deer. A nice spike. 30 out 6 with a triple shock Barnes X bullets. Yeah. Works like a million dollars. Yeah, we come up over the top of the hill. We knew we were pushing a deer. We thought, you know, he might be on top of this thing. And he was. <laughs> Standing on the very tip top. Yep. I don't think he saw us or heard us. No. Alrighty. Well, now the work begins. Yep.